Hello and welcome back to the Non-League Podcast with myself, Lee Simons. And today we've got another special guest with me. We've got the Stanway Rovers first team manager, Daniel Slatter, with me. Hello, Daniel. How are you? Hi, Lee. How are you doing? Hope yeah. everything's all right with you. Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Uh, still stuck in isolation. Uh, I think this is now my sixth week. I think we've got another two to three weeks left to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much the same as you. Um, it's just sort of... Uh, Obviously, it's not the ideal um, scenario, but it's one that we've got to sort of uh, keep, keep doing really and keep in line with what the government says. Yeah, definitely. So, how are you keeping busy at the moment then? Um, I've got a two and a half year old, nearly three. Um, wow. So, she's keeping me busy, me and my um, fiance busy. Yeah. So, uh, um, that, that's, that's the top of our agenda. So, I'll be going out on lots of bike rides, and um, thankfully, the weather's been quite nice over the sort of lockdown. Yeah, it's not um, been so too good. Yeah, it's no, not... your speech's been lovely. Yeah, it's not been too bad, is it? It's not. It's. I think it's going to be quite nice for the weekend, which is going to be quite good. I think I've got a few jobs to sort out, but uh, yeah, never know. Yeah. These things have to happen, don't they? No, exactly. So um, yeah, I've been going out for walks and trying try and keep active. Um, or well, basically just trying to tire out so she goes to bed early in the evening. Yeah, I bet. So you can actually have a relaxing evening exactly. for yourself, sure, and yeah. then then you can chill out, can't you? Yeah, exactly. So you say you've been on bike roads. How, how how long have you been going on for the bike roads? Is that every um, day or? Well, yeah, pr- pretty much every day. We sort of um, acquired a, a, a bike seat um, for the little one, um, and it's been a godsend really. So we've been able to get out and sort of not just being sort of limited to our daily walks. We've been able to go further afield. So we've been doing about twenty kilometres each day. So oh, wow. So um, it's yeah, quite good really. Uh, that's what we need to do, just to keep active, and then hopefully in the next couple of weeks, uh, hopefully we can get out a bit more, and then of course football starts again. Well, that's it. It's, as was I said, it's, it's it's good to get out and um, keep your fitness and keep your sanity really, so it gets you out in the fresh air. So um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a godsend really. Um, so yeah, really good. Good, good, good. So Daniel, for people who don't know you, uh, can we just have a lot like, of background story from yourself and how you got into football? Um. Well, basically, how I got into football. Um, I originally started at Stanway Rovers when I was um, a young, a young boy, young kid. Um, and then um, after that, we had a very good, successful side. Um, and sort of, majority of the players went off to sort of a different academy. Um, so I went to Ipswich. Um, but then I sort of got released um, before they sort of made their um, quota. Right. Uh, for, for 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 being too small, which I thought was quite weird. So I think I was only ten at the time. Oh right. So obviously, t- t- time to grow and all that. Um, yeah. So um, after that, I went to Coach United, um, and I excelled there. Yeah. Um, and then um, from there, I went to um, the FA National School, which was basically before all the academies happened. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So um, the sixteen best boys in the whole of England get selected to go to um, to go and live in this school in uh, Liverpool. Oh, right, wow. Um, and you do all your sort of um, academic up there in the local school and then you obviously you represent England in the games on um, on the uh, weekends. So oh, wow. um, I was rubbing shoulders for the likes of, obviously there was two years there, there was the seniors uh, above you and juniors. Yeah. So the seniors above me, I was sort of rubbing shoulders on my, uh, Michael Owen, yeah. uh, Wes Brown, uh, Michael Ball, who was Everton. Um, and then when I was the seniors... I had um, the likes of Joe Cole below me. Oh, um, right, wow. So, they're, 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 and in my year, I had Scott Parker, who was probably the main one, uh, Francis Jeffers, uh, Stuart Taylor, the Arsenal goalkeeper. Wow. So, um, um, yeah, so from there, I sort of, well, I was at Colts United at the time, and when yeah. I left the school at 16, so obviously I was expected to go to Colchester, um, yeah. then I'd, I sort of, uh, I was in sort of, not, not, um, I didn't want to leave culture, but I thought, you know what, I might send my CV out there to other clubs. Yeah. Um, which I did, and the majority come back and said they made their quota for that year. Right. Um, but Chelsea come back to me and said they'll come down for a trial. Oh, wow. Um, and go from there, really. So I, I let culture know, I said that this is what I wanted to do, just yeah. to test myself and push myself. Yeah. Um, I went down to Chelsea, had a trial game. Um, it was quite, quite funny, really, the trial game. I didn't really do much during the game. No. But in the last minute... Um, I created a bit of skill and got across in for one of the um, uh, lads and we scored from it and then I think that that was what got me a deal really so um, from 16 onwards I was at Chelsea until um, 21 years old OK yeah so so you were like in like an academy should we say like it is like now but for those like a few years ago or when you was 21 uh, sorry was it 16? 16 yeah when there so you went straight into a YTS uh, OK 
Yeah, yeah. Um, which I think they still have that nowadays in the academies, but nothing like what it used to be. So you turn up at um, eight o'clock, you go in and clean all the boots for the players and yeah. um, lay out all their kit and do, do, do all the things that you, you um, expected of them. So um, who, so you, who did you have to clean the boots for? Mine, I had in my first year. I had um, Mark Hughes. Yeah. I had Jody Morris, who um, obviously was a youngster coming through then. Yeah. Um, I had Nick Colgan, a goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I had uh, Gustavo Poirier. Um, oh. And then I can't think of the other one I had. Um, yeah, there, there was them four, wow. basically, that I looked after. Um, and to be, to be honest, it sounds, sounds stupid saying it, but it's probably one of the best jobs I had. It's, it's, <laughs> it took so much pride in sort of trying to get their boots clean and obviously make sure if it's laid out properly for them because you know that they'll take care of you and they sort of respect that. So um, you sort of earn a bit of respect from, 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 from doing that. Yeah. Did you meet any of the players as well while you were doing that? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, on a, on a, on a daily basis, we used to sort of uh, be in contact with them. Um, yeah. I was quite fortunate that when I did sign there at 16, um, I, was, I pretty much hit, hit the ground running and before you know it, I signed a professional contract and... I was in the reserves in the first sort of first year of my YTS. Oh, wow. Um, and then that first year, I got asked to go um, on an end, end of season tour with the first team. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, the likes of myself, uh, John Terry, John Harley, um, uh, and a few other youngsters went to Martinique in the Caribbean. Oh, wow. I bet that's kind so, of a... So you're like rubbing sh- shoulders with the first team. I bet that was quite a eye-opener yeah, as well, so, really. Yeah, so we was obviously training together and obviously playing in the, the, the friendlies out in uh, Martinique yeah. and literally just sort of being part of the first team squad. Um, wow. So that, that, that was really exciting and uh, good times for me. Yeah, I bet it was. So what was your position then, Dan, um, when you were at the uh, academy? Um, I was basically, when it was, it's hard, I, was, I was a midfielder, but um, yeah. they deployed a sort of tactic, or the, the formation was 3 um, 5 2. So obviously that was a time when Rude Hullet was the manager. Yeah. Um, and then he was sort of quite attacking, and they wanted to sort of have the same formation as the first team. Okay. So through the day, I went to the reserves and to the under, under well, the youth team basically, we had the same formation. So I ended up seeing myself being um, a right wing back. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I was actually, well, quite fit back then um, not now but um, I was quite fit energetic up and down and I had a good well delivery in, in, into the box really um, and then from then I was sort of went into centre midfield yeah um, the older I got um, yeah so wow so, sounds interesting especially when you go into like all these uh, tours and uh, rubbing uh, next to the first first team in the reserves as well which is an uh, achievement for yourself yeah, no, it was, um, and it's sort of looking back. People have said to me, maybe you should have stayed at Colchester because you might have had a better chance getting in the first team. But I sort of look back and think I did. I did make the bench twice uh, in the Premier League. Um, wow. Didn't get on, what? and then I did sort of. Um, I travelled to um, Hapel Tel Aviv. Yeah. Um, for one of the European games, when six oh, of the wow. first team players did, didn't want to travel due to like the terrorists and just the risk of yeah. anything happening to them they sort of didn't want to travel so well, I jumped at a chance I bet, I bet you did <laughs> so, to, so to what, yeah so what were the uh, teams you, you were on the bench for for Chelsea then um, I was at home um, it was at Stamford Bridge it was home to Man City okay yeah um, and it was so close um, that was when we had Viali uh, and then that was Claudio Ranieri was the manager then okay yeah yeah so he um he, he got me involved in the in the team and um I was about to get on me and John Harley warming up down um towards uh, Matthew Harley's stand and then uh it's sort of getting called back and you think there's your chance and then yeah. bloody Sean Wright Phillips goes and scores an equaliser for oh. Man City so it makes it one 0 and then you sort of think is that my chance and then he ended up putting on Winston Bogard instead of, instead of me um, oh. Oh, so. Shocky. It is, as I said, to, um, to, to, the, to the young lads I teach, there's, there's a lot of luck and sort of um, involved in football. And it's just sort of, you look back and think maybe if that hadn't happened, would my chance come in maybe 20 minutes? Who, who knows what could have happened in 20 minutes? But um, f- thoroughly enjoyed myself at um, Chelsea and, and made some sort of good memories there. 
So I, I bet that's a quite a, a great experience for you, especially with the crowds, you know, chanting and everything. And you were like moments away to get on to that Stamford Bridge pitch. I bet that was an yeah, amazing yeah. feeling for you anyway. Yeah, um, it was. And obviously me and John Harley were warming up and there was the fans of China. And um, obviously because we're both, or they thought we were both young Englishmen coming through. Obviously John was English, but um, I was Welsh. So they were saying that I'll, China, the English boys, but um, they didn't realise I was Welsh and I, I was representing um, Wales at under-21 level at that time as well. I bet that was um, quite an amazing achievement as well for, for being in the Welsh under-21 setup as well. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. Um, obviously, as I said previously, the whole point of me going to the national school was obviously I was English. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I represented up to 18, under-18s level at England. Yeah. Um, and then you can sort of foresee... The 21s, they had a sort of set set team. And then when Mark Hughes left Chelsea, yeah, he knew um, I was Welsh because obviously I've cleaned them boots and he, he knew I was Welsh and from sort of Wales. Um, I was born there, sorry. Um, and then he then became the Welsh manager of the yeah. national team. Yeah. So then he's still in contact with a few people at um, Chelsea and he sort of, um, he actually said to me, would you come and sort of come over and sort of play, play, play for Wales? Put, oh, put wow. your allegiance to... Um, to Wales, so I sort of looked at the the, for, for the under 21s team, and it was so strong back in that day. Um, and it wasn't a sort of down to my ability, but then I did think that I was actually born in Wales, so I made the um, decision to go and represent um, uh, Wales again. I bet that was, you know, in your eyes, I bet that was kind of like you, know, you achieved something with uh, with Wales because Mark Hughes actually wanted you to come and uh, play for, 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 yeah. for, the, for the national team, which is... Yeah, it was. Um, and I always, always remember to this day, he actually said to me, he said, why don't you come and represent your home country? And it's sort of like, as soon as someone like Mark Hughes, the iconic legend, he sort of thinks, you know what, be stupid not to. And it's sort of, um, yeah, it, it, it was it was great. And it was a good decision for me. I, I've done well for the under-21s. Um, actually got called up to the first team, the actual... Yeah. Um, uh, me and Chris Llewellyn... Um, for a pre-season friendly in or not pre-season friendly it was before the Euro I can't remember the Euros it was but Wales were playing Portugal right over yeah. in Portugal so they wanted us in a friendly so yeah. um, Mark Hughes called me and Chris Llewellyn up for the 21s oh, wow. to go out there and sort of um, be involved unfortunately I didn't get on yeah. but I was on the bench from the, again that day but again that was a great experience rubbing shoulders with like Gary Speed your Ryan Giggs John Hartson your Bellamy's um just, just yeah, just, again, it's just these, these sort of experiences I had, and lucky to have, I think. So yeah, wow. sort of cherish the moments. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially when you kind of like nearly there on that pitch, but all for the the overall experience. I bet you know because you you got there. You know, you you can say yeah, I actually tried to represent yeah. my country and of course Chelsea Football Club as well. That's uh, definitely an achievement in yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, as I said. Um, I am proud of, what, of how it went, but it's just um, it could have gone a, a bit better. I could have been the likes of uh, John Terry and sort of uh, been been <laughs> been a worldwide star, but um, it didn't quite end up like that. But I still sort of made a good sort of career out of the game and sort of um, kept playing for as long as I could, really. So that's really good. That's uh, that's really impressive. So so when you went from Chelsea with Wales, whereabouts did you go after that then, Dan? Um, yeah, well, as I said, that last season I sort of. I think as well, I was on the bench against Man City, then travelled away to um, uh, Tel Aviv, and I was on the bench away at Sunderland as well, and I was thinking, hopefully my contract was going to get renewed. Yeah. Um, then decision made, I got called in by the general manager, uh, Rick Williams, and said, look, it's like, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to renew your contract, but we'll do everything we can to sort of push you in the right direction. OK. Um, and at that time, it was um, Graham Ricks who was... Jan Luca Viola's assistant at the time. Um, yeah. He was down at Portsmouth. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. And he was manager down there, so um, I got on really well with him, and he, he liked me. Um, and this is what I found throughout the stages when I left Chelsea: the sort of I, I, I do call it bad luck, or people might say bad timing. But I went down to Portsmouth um, and sort of met Graham. He said, "Look, let's just go and sort of play in the reserves, and we'll we'll, we'll get things sorted." Um, so I was down there for about a week, and I done again. I'm not blowing my own trumpet but I've done really well um, and just about done that sort, sort of something out with Graham Ricks he got the sack oh, right. <laughs> and then um, Harry Redknapp come in okay, um, yeah. so then I spoke to my agent and my agent was just saying that look we can go and speak to Harry then he might not want you because he don't know you and so um, 
fortunately, it sort of it didn't sort of materialise. Unfortunately, sorry. Um, and then I had another phone call from my old youth team manager, Jim Duffy. Yeah. He was manager at Dundee at the time. Okay. Up in Scotland. Yeah. So again, I'd done exactly the same thing. Went and played um, up in Scotland for, the, for their pre-season. Uh, yeah. We travelled to, if I remember right, I think it was Romania. Right. Um, played in all the pre-season games for the first team and then um, come back. And he said, just go back down the road. So I'll come back to Colchester. Um, yeah. He said, sit tight and we'll sort of sing out with your agent. Right. Um, weeks passed and then that was when the ITV digital thing fell out. Yes. Um, yep. And there was sort of no money and sort of, I know it's Scottish football, but a lot of people were sort of struggling for um, get, getting the right squad and finances and that. And uh, he needed to get a striker in instead of me. So uh, I ended up sort of losing out on that one as well. And having those two sort of knocks, it did knock your confidence. It, it, yeah. it, 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 it knocked me about a bit. Um, uh, at the time, I was still getting money on paid from Chelsea because I was on the contract, but you sort of start to think, is this ever going to happen? And yeah. didn't fall out with love of the game, but you certainly do sort of have a lot of self-doubt. I think, what, what more can I do? Um, yeah. And then from then, I went to... Um, well, I was, I was out of the game. I just sort of left, lost interest for about a couple of months. Yeah. Then I got in touch with um, a friend of mine who was at Belmsford under the um, manager um, of Paul Parker. Yeah. The old England right back. Yeah. Um, and he just said, it's fancy coming over. Um, and I was like, you know, my head's not in a good place, but I'll give it a go. Um, and I ended up going back to Chelmsford um, and playing there for two seasons. Yeah. Um, got my love back for the game. And then from then on, I started making my way back up to the three of the leagues, really. Went to um, Welling United. Yeah. Um, and then the manager there, who, who was uh, Liam Daish, um, he then got a job at Ipsleet, which then was Gravesend and Northfleet in the conference. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, t- he took me with him over there, and I had five years in the conference then with uh, Ipsleet United. Oh, wow. I, I, bet that was, um, I bet that was a kind of an experience, being there for like, you know, from going from Chelsea to, you know, Dundee, uh, yeah. and then going, because you, then you said you fell out of the game. I bet that was kind of a, a bit of a pick-up point, you know, you, you were actually there, you know, at a club for five years, so that, that is an achievement in itself, really. Yeah, no, no, it was, it was, because obviously, I didn't doubt, my, doubt myself at all, it's just sort of, just, there was no luck, it wasn't happening, things, no. excuses, like, I had to get a striker instead of you, you think, really, come on, I'm sure there's ways you can sort of get a player in, you sort of, it did, it did sort of get me down, then I went to Chelmsford, and I think that's where I got sort of found, found, um, well, started enjoying it again, really, and think, you know yeah. what, let's, let's see what happens. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, you end up at Edge Fleet with um, Liam Dace, and I had a really good time there, sort of five years, met some good friends. Um, recently, it was last Sunday, actually, we won the FA Trophy at Wembley. OK, yeah, yeah. Um, I was actually, well, I wasn't I was, wasn't was involved in the squad, so I'd just come back from my ACL knee injury. Um, right. So I was only a couple of weeks away from being fully fit, so... But, um, yeah, that, that was a great day out. Um, and then from then, um, ended up coming back down the Leeds again, then ended up going to Billericay. Yes. Uh, yep. Farnborough. Farnborough, Billericay, and then Averley. Yeah. Uh, and then it was a friend that I've sort of been in contact with... Um, uh, throughout football, uh, Steve Pitt, yeah. who's now um, obviously director of football or something at uh, Chelmsford, um, he was manager at Stanway. Okay, right. Eh? Uh, wow. And I was sort of coming towards the end, uh, I was travelling to Avery and I was thinking, I really can't be bothered to keep travelling anymore, so Steve may be an offer, mm-hmm. um, and I'll come back to Stanway, and that's 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 the that's where I've been since, really. So, so from that point on, did you still uh, playing for Stanway um, at the end of the career, or did you, you know, did you did you decide that you wanted to go into management coaching at that stage? Uh, no, he was still. I was still wanting to play. I was still playing. Um, yep. So I had about Steve left, and then Barry Lakin came. So I had about two, well, three years playing. I think four years. Yeah. Um, and then Angelo come in, um, and then Angelo said, "Do you want to sort of come and sort of be assistant?" Okay. Um, and then that's that's where sort of the coaching side, the assisting side, sort of sort of come in. And um, obviously you, you can't play football forever. Um, mm. I like to think I can, but <laughs> up, up in my head I can. But my knees, my knees are telling me otherwise. Yeah. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, sort of then you look to the other side of it, which is the coach side and the management, managerial side, and um, that definitely appealed to me, and um, I haven't looked back since, really. I bet, I bet that's a kind of a, a change in, you know, in your set mind, really, because going from playing and then going to, like, coaching and, of course, then being an assistant manager, I bet that's a kind of, uh, like, you had to, like, step back a little bit and then kind yeah, of go sort of. forward again. Yeah, um, it, it was. When, when I was assisting Ange, he had um, someone on the sidelines, but I was still playing. Right, OK, um, yeah. So I was, I was sort of playing assistant, and then he had um, Alex Drennan next to him on the touchline. Um, and we, we, we had a really good setup there at um, uh, uh, Stanway, the, the, the three of us. Yeah. Um, and then, um, obviously, the transition, as you said, you sort of, you're trying to be a player and a teammate, but at the same time, you've got your sort of head in the, the, the manager side of it, so... Yes. The players, the, 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 the players knew they could trust me, so I wouldn't go behind anyone's back and sort of say, "Oh, they're saying this about the management," because that just didn't happen um, back then. No. Um, and then, um, unfortunately, Angelo left to Drenz and majority of the team, myself included, because something happened at the club. And then, um, yeah, we parted ways really. Right. Okay. Um, and then uh, I was out of the f- well, I was out of football for a bit. Then I, a friend of mine wanted me to get playing again at Holland. Yes. Um, so I just went over there, played a few games, um, and then I sort of done something to my knee again, I think, um, and I just sort of stopped playing for a bit. Yeah. Um, and then it's only recently, uh, last not last season, season before. Yes. Um, obviously, there's a new chairman coming at Stanway, uh, Dave Jones, um, who's been brilliant for me. Yeah. Um, he um, he took over and um, he uh, got a new manager in Terry Spillane. Yes. Uh, Terry applied for the job. Oh, I applied for it as well. Yep. Um, I didn't get it uh, first opportunity because um, they sort of just said experience, and obviously I just had a, my 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 baby girl, so they probably thought time on my hands and everything like that. Yeah. Um, which I didn't agree with at the time. So obviously experience, I think I've got, I think the football background I have just speaks for itself. Yes. Um, so I assisted Terry uh, in the Essex Senior League. Um, which it's just not as good as the furlough now, but it certainly sort of um, it makes you realise uh, what sort of players you need for that standard football in the Essex Senior League. Um, and unfortunately, the club was going through a transition period at the time. Um, yeah, yeah. They lost a few managers in a sort of spate of a, a couple of years. Uh, the club itself wasn't in a good position, um, but then when Dave came in and took over the, the, the club with the chairman of the Reigns, um, the, the idea was trying to get Stanway back on the map. Um, yeah. and then when we found out it was going back in the furlough um, I reapplied for a job so they parted company with Terry at the end of that season um, yeah. or four games before the end of the season it was um, right, okay, yeah. and they asked me to um, take the job to the end of the season Yeah. pretty much sort of saying you're going to get it for the next year but obviously which I found in football you can't take anything for granted so um, definitely I give not, my no. best I give my best for the last four games of that season. Um, we had a great finish. We stayed up because yeah. we was we could have gone down. Um, which the club said, "Look, we can't go down. So we need to stay up because obviously we want to hopefully try and get in the furlough now." Yes. Um, and we did stay up, and um, the rest is history. Really, we come back uh, the or well, last season. Oh, that was my first manager's job, really. So. I, I, I bet that was a quite an interesting like uh, moment where you got only like four or five games left of the that current season, and then of course you've got to take the reins on, keep the club up, work with the players what you, you know what you've got because you can't really like bring any players yeah. in at that stage, and you're thinking right, I need to get this moving a little yeah. bit more and try and, was, um, and trying to yeah. get your stamp on the actual team and uh, the club itself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You put the nail on the head there. It was very difficult. So obviously Terry came in. He had his own ideas. He had his own players. Um, and the lads he brought in were were, were were good lads. But and obviously they they stayed true to Terry. Um, and when he left, they left. Which you do get that in non-league, really. Um, yeah. So majority of players that we had had left with Terry. So we were sort of had a handful of players that um, I knew originally, and then the rest was sort of made up from players that we could get on loan so we couldn't sign anyone permanently no. they had to be loaned and then um, youth players because um, Stanway itself has got an unbelievable youth section um, which I'm hoping to sort of um, make the most of in, 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 well hopefully if I'm there long enough in, in, in the coming years I, I bet that's um, quite I, I bet that's quite interesting really because uh, when all these players kind of leave you uh, like, and then you've only got like 
a handful of like first teamers and then you, of course you got the reserves team and of course did you have a, like an under 18s team like, like, like the season before that uh, there, there wasn't really. Um, okay. It's, it's, it's weird because it's only just since last season that the 18s have we've come on board because obviously Angelo's coming as director of football and okay. there's a structure at the club now where there is the 18s, there is the reserves, and there's a clear pathway through to the first team. Okay. Yeah. Whereas before it was sort of like mainly just sort of you've got youngsters that could sign on for the first team. Yeah. Uh, the reserves, and then that was it, the first team. There was no clear pathway for, for, for um, anyone really. Um, but now this 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 has all been set out, and it is such a clear pathway. And you got this from the 16s; um, they go straight into the 18s, and then yeah. it just shows. For this season, I've I've had a lad, uh, Luke Skinner, in goal, who's um he was he's a young 16 year old. So he just turned 16 in yeah. last May. Yes, yeah. Um, he um he came in for a couple of games where one of my keeper was missing. Fantastic talent, and um. Uh, he he came in and sort of when we got my keeper back, he he sort of sat back on the bench and that. Yeah. And then um, he left the keeper. As I found out these these strange things, he just said he's he wasn't feeling football and his heart wasn't in it. And it's like, well, okay. Yeah. You can't really sort of well, it, you, you 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 can't argue a player's decision or the feeling. So um, I stepped in and got got Luke back in goal, and I didn't look back ready for a sixteen year old. Yeah. So he, he, he done it exceptionally well. I, I, I bet he did, uh, especially going from like you, you kept the club up, and then you go into the pre-season, especially being on you know on your own. This is my club. This is my team. I want to bring it up uh, best as I can. Yeah, um, and it was it was difficult. I'm not going to lie. Me and Ange um, obviously set out with targets in mind of players, but then obviously you've got to be sort of um, sensible. And obviously we we do have a budget, and obviously. Yeah. Some budgets in the league are greater than others, as, as we know. Yeah. Um, but our, our, our budget was so and so, and we had to sort of go in line and try and get a full well squad, really, of 16 good players, maybe 18. Yeah. Um, and I, I ain't going to lie, I found it hard trying to sort of keep keep within that Yeah. Um, and get the players in, because obviously the better players that you do want probably do want a bit more money than some some other players. Um, that's yeah. football, generally. Yeah. Um, but the lads I've had this season that we got in from pre-season, they've all been top draw. Um, obviously, uh, you've had him on the show recently, John Carver. Yes. Um, first time I've met him was obviously pre-season. He came and he's a giant of a well, I was going to say man. <laughs> he's, he's only a boy really in age-wise, but um, yeah. such a lovely character. And me and him have hit it off straight away. Um, so he came in. Then we had Milo Grimes, who was already at Stanway. Um, yeah. So I was working in with Terry. Yes. Um, again. Obviously, he got into that team as the theme, so he's probably going to listen to this all when he's next on the show. And I'm just telling him not to get a big head. But, um, <laughs> he, he, again, is an exceptional talent who, who will do well for me next season. Definitely. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we, we, we had to start afresh, basically. So going from having sort of no team, start of pre-season, we had possibly Tyler Kent and Milo Grimes. Yep. And Finn O'Reilly were the only players that were left from Terry Spillane, so three players and we had to get a whole squad. Oh, wow. Um, which we did. And along the way, you end up picking up some players. Um, as we know, is um, Danny Cunningham uh, and Curtis Haynes Brown we got from Coggershaw. Yes. Um, and the Jack Baker and Remy Gant from um, Whitton United, who all which is boys and exceptional players um, and sort of um, lads that. Done it really, really well, really well for my first season in charge of football. Uh, yeah, you've done really well. You were top five of the Premier Division. Uh, you know, I, I felt what I've seen of your team, it, it seems a bit, it's like it's um, really tall, it's really powerful, um, right attitude to, to play for, for you, Dan, and you know, credit to you, really, and, and for the club. Yeah, yeah, no, as I said, um, um, well, honest as the day is long, really. Um, that, that's that's always that's been the way I played. I've always gone out there and sort of given my all um, for for the manager and obviously for the fans who I've played in front of. Um, I just wanted to rub off on the players, and also I've got my um, assistant Adam Mann, who's been um, a joy to work with and very sort of. Um, I'm, I'm more of a hands-on with the talking, but he goes into far more great detail with his coaching sessions and obviously uh, team talks. Yeah. Um, and obviously I've had Craig Hughes who was going to be my captain but unfortunately got injured um, he ended up being on the on the sidelines with me and Adam as well and he's he's such a great asset for me I played with Hughesy for 
for a few years now at Stanway together and um, we've just sort of become good friends on and off the pitch really. That's really um, good, that's really good. So yeah. for so for coming on for next season, what are your plans for next season really? Um, I didn't want a season to finish really because I know obviously people might listen to this but our last game was uh, Roxham away and I yeah. think for me that was our best game that we've played because we had to go out of the game plan because Roxham my opinion, we're the best team in the league playing football-wise. Mm. Um, some very good players there um, and a tough place to go, Roxham, especially yeah. on a uh, midweek. So we went there and we put in a great performance. Uh, everyone stuck to the game plan and uh, we come away winning 1-0. Um, and I think that was that was the start that we needed to go in for that run-in to try and get that second spot. Um, yeah. um, which didn't happen really because obviously <laughs> this uh, COVID-19, but um, obviously you've got to be sensible. There's more important things than football. Um, it's just a shame it finished the way it did but expectations are to do the same um, yeah. if not more really because obviously you want to improve on each season so we've got to improve on what, what we've done really um, so it'd be nice to topple Stone Market but obviously they they, uh, they were sort of worthy winners but unfortunately that wasn't meant to be for them either so uh, they're going to come out and it's going to be another, well, another tough and physical season again I think, yeah. I think all the all the twenty teams in that league, I think it will be very strong for next season, from top to the bottom. You know, even yeah. in the middle, I think every team will have a prove uh, a point to prove, and every no, level, and I think it's going to be really good for next season because what I've been seeing is uh, since I've I've been watching non league football since twenty seventeen, uh, the crowds are getting bigger. Uh, you, you see more young fans coming in, even with uh, the replica shirts on, which is great. Um, yeah. There wasn't much like highlights or anything going on with that, but now you've got uh, yourselves were doing it. You've got uh, Woodbridge, got, uh, Stone Market, myself doing a little bits here and there. So it's all coming on to, together, really. I think. Yeah, no, no, it's definitely. In. What, what what people need to realise is so important. It likes yourselves at uh, doing these things. It's just. just promote the clubs um, to promote non-league football in general because there's a lot of things that go unnoticed that are run by the people behind the scenes at the clubs that probably don't get the, the paid for it um, and obviously don't get enough credit really um, so it's good to see people coming through the doors and enjoying it because at the end of the day it is, I don't think you get that close to anyone in the Premier League so no. we've got a new sort of fans now at Stanway they're called the Stanway Ultras I'm sure there's lots throughout, throughout the um, league and leagues yeah. below and leagues above but um they're, they're just a young group of lads that have set upon themselves to start an Instagram page and, and doing things like that to promote the club. And I just think it's fantastic. Um, and I think it's just, it is just good for non-league football. Definitely, because you've got uh, your blue wave at Roxham with a, a Freddie up there doing his bits and pieces for the club. And of yeah. course, um, yourselves as well, Fetford, Stone Market, you know. I feel like, you know, with, especially with like the Vars Cup, you know, with Roxham against yeah. Stone Market, you've got over a thousand fans there, which is incredible. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's our intentions this season, um, along with doing one of the league, is to try and sort of promote our social media better and sort of get, get Stanway more out there as, as much as possible, really. So the things like the highlights it will, will only sort of benefit us. Yeah, definitely. I know there's always pros and cons to like social media, but I, I think it's going to be a really good thing, really, because you know, I've I spoken to a few people. They do enjoy watching their goals back. I've even had a, like a, a few players come up to me saying, uh, oh, Lee, can I have my footage for my for my goal? And I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. But it's like those goals got over like between four to 5,000 views on, on those goals, yeah. which, is, which is incredible, really. Yeah, um, and like you said, play, players do like to see. I'm, not, I'm saying it's the nicest way. Players do like to see a picture of themselves in action. They do like to see if they've scored a goal to see the to see the clips because um, unfortunately there there isn't enough in non-league to sort of do that. So the more and more people do it, it's only going to benefit um, the club and obviously the players themselves. And especially with the structures in every single club now, they're starting to bring in like the reserves team. They're bringing in the under eighteens, under sixteen teams, even the ladies teams in most of the most of the uh, clubs which are in the third oh nine, which is really good to see. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and obviously, Stan, as I said, the unbelievable sort of structures for use. They've also got an unbelievable um, ladies teams and girls teams coming through as well. So. It is, and I think it is only good for, for again, non-league football and for, for the men and uh, boys and girls. 
So one other final question for yourself, Dan. Um, so who's been your toughest opposition from last season? Toughest opposition? Yeah. Um, as you said, it's hard because every, like I tell the boys, every, time, every team we go against is going to be a tough one because um, everyone wants to win a game of football at the end of the day. Um, to, to narrow it down, we've had sort of a few games against Woodbridge. Obviously, yeah. um, at home, we beat them. Uh, three, four, one, I think, and then we went to them in the Vars, and then they beat us. That was a tough game. Stone Market, obviously, very tough. Um, and then you got your new markets that are always going to be sort of um, well tough to play against. Obviously, you've got Michael Shin there, um, yeah. who I know playing with um, and against in the past. He, he's, he's got them well run. So um, to nail it down, I can't really name one side, but. Yes, it's just it is difficult. You got Fetford, as I said, on 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 a day there's, in in that league. That's that's why I think it's a great league because any team could beat anyone really. Um, Definitely. Um, may, maybe not Stone Market, but get a draw. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Daniel, it's been a pleasure you coming on and speaking me uh, to me on, on the podcast. That was uh, really great of you. Well, thank you so much for having me, um, and I hope to see you at the Hawthorns or even at your, your ground, Fetford. Hopefully, I hope so. I hope it's safe to do so. Yeah, hopefully to safe to do so. That'd be great to see you as well. That'd be great. Okay, lovely. So, for people who are listening to the podcast, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.